So it seems to be that time of year again, the time when I get the itch to get another bike. So what did I get? Did I go for the Triumph Speed Twin, the Tiger Sport 660, the Tiger 900 GT, or did I keep the Harley? Well, in today's video, I test ride all of them and I finally make a decision. So which one did I like the best? Which one did I get? Stay tuned as I go through all of them and discuss the pros and cons and why I chose what I did. So thanks for stopping by and tuning in. If you like the content and this channel, please hit the like and subscribe button for more videos. It really helps out. And if you're not familiar with this channel, my name is Joe and I currently own a 2009 Harley Davidson Superglide. If you are familiar with this channel, then you know that I started last year on a 2020 Honda Rebel 500, which I'm now up to my fourth bike in one and a half years. So instead of boring you with why I kept switching bikes, let's just jump right into the ones that I tested recently. And after we go through the bikes and which one I chose, then if you feel like sticking around, I'll talk about why I went through all the bikes that I did in the past year and a half and how I ended up with what I have right now. So first up is the Triumph Speed Twin 1200. It used to just be called the Speed Twin, but Triumph also had the Street Twin, which was a similar bike but had a 900cc engine in it and only had five speeds instead of six. But this year Triumph decided to drop the street name and call them both the Speed Speed Twin, but one is now the Speed Twin 1200, while the other is the Speed Twin 900. So the 900 that was formerly known as the Street Twin, which no longer ex exists, is now known as the Speed Twin 900. So I like the Speed Twin 1200 for its looks and also its performance. I was interested in that classic Bonneville look um, and also the performance of the 12 inch engine and the six speeds that it has. And I really like the look of the gloss black version. And I kind of wasn't sure about the flat seat or how I would feel about a flat seat. I didn't know if you'd feel like you were kind of being pushed back, but uh, either way, I wanted to, to try it out. Now, I had it in road mode and it was plenty fast in road mode. I did put it in sport mode for a little bit and I, I didn't find too much of a difference, but I really didn't push it that hard. Oh man, that engine pulls, holy cow. As, as far as com comfort, I'm five foot nine, 31 inch in, in seam, and I found the bike was uh, extremely comfortable. I was able to flat foot it, no problem. The position on the bars, I thought were good. I didn't feel hunched over or leaned over, very upright, neutral position. My legs didn't feel cramped. Um, the seat, like I said, actually felt better than I thought. I didn't think I would like that flat seat, but I really didn't have any uh, problems with it. I stayed planted while I was riding. I guess the only negative things that I found about the bike is one was the lack of self-canceling turn signals. I'm actually surprised on a bike this price that it doesn't have them. Even the cheaper Triumph Trident has them. Even the uh, the Trident Six, uh, Trident Sport 660 has them, which are both you know cheaper bikes, and yet they have uh, self-canceling signals. So I'm not sure why the Bonnevilles don't. So. Next up is the gauges. I, I love the retro look. Um, it's got a little touch of tech in it with the LCDs, but I found the LCDs kind of hard to read, especially in the sun. And the signals were actually very hard to read in the bright sun. I actually had to cut my hand over the gauge to see if my signals were actually uh, working. Uh, other than that, everything else about the bike that I love, just those you know couple minor negatives about it. So next up, I wanted to try the Tiger Sport 660. Now, previously owning a, a Trident 660, I was pretty familiar with the bike, but I wanted to feel for myself the, the differences. For one, the foot peg height isn't as cramped as it was on the Trident. You actually have more room in your legs. And it actually felt a little bit more of a, a relaxed feeling on the bike. Nothing nothing major, but did feel a little bit different than the Trident. Um, like I said, it wasn't as cramped as, as the Trident was. Not that the Trident is a cramped bike, but the Tiger Sport 660, you have a little bit more leg room. Uh, the gauges are also very familiar to the Trident, just a little bit of a, a different styling, but otherwise the same info that you get, uh, just the styling is a little bit different, but I'm probably it's probably the same exact uh, gauge underneath, just with a, a different outer kind of shell to it. But uh, what I was really curious about this bike was the wind noise. Being that the Sport 660 has a fairing and has an adjustable windshield, I was excited to see how much quieter it was than my previous Trident, and of course I figured it was going to be quieter than the uh, the Speed Twin that I, that I tried. But to my surprise, I wasn't impressed with the wind protection at all. Even with the windshield at the highest setting, I found it to be, it was pretty noisy. I would have actually preferred the nakedness of the Trident 660, it. at least to have that, you know, that clean air that it provides. This was a little bit more uh, turbulent. It wasn't too bad as in, you know, excessive. It just wasn't as quiet as I would hoping it would be for a bike that, you know, now has a, a fairing and a windscreen. You know, if I still had my Trident, I definitely would not trade it in for a Tiger Sport. Not saying that the Tiger Sport is a bad bike, but I just think they're, they're too close. Maybe if I had to choose between the, 
the two when I was first buying. Uh, then I would go for the Tiger Sport over the Trident because they're very uh, similar in price, and at least you are getting some protection for, with the wind and the fairing, but just not as much as I was hoping for. Um, for me to even consider that bike right now, especially after owning a Trident 660 previously. So next up was the Tiger Sport 900 GT. This one yeah. caught my eye just on the looks. I love the Sapphire Black, uh, and I'm a sucker for black bikes. I just think they look really sharp, especially when clean. This version was actually the 900 GT Low, which I'm only five foot nine with a 31 inch right. inseam, and I was curious about the low version as you know the regular Tigers usually sit uh, pretty high, especially the the 1200s. But the other oh, 900s, they were higher than this, but not not that high. I could have easily got away with it, but I did like. The fact that it was low because sitting on it, I was able to flat foot it no problem and it was very comfortable. I know the lows have uh, a shorter seat and they do that by getting rid of some cushioning. So some people may complain that it's not as uh, a cushy ride as the regular 900s. I found no problem with it. I thought the seat was uh, very comfortable and the riding position was really comfortable too, as well as the, the foot pegs. I like that it had the, the rubber on the, on the pegs to absorb vibration. So once I got on it and started riding, you know, it had that familiar sound of uh, the triple, but with a little bit more of a low-end growl to it. Like other reviewers say, if you watch videos, um, the new T-Plane triple design, and it's got the new 132 firing order, it sounds closer to a twin than a triple, but regardless, it still sounded and performed nice, and like I said, it's got that, that hint of a triple sound uh, behind it. And like I said, I found the seat to be comfortable as well as the, the foot and hand positioning, um, not cramped. It just felt very uh, natural and just a, a nice, comfortable feeling on the bike. I didn't feel hunched over. I didn't feel any pressure on my hands, you know, not leaning forward, uh, forward too much. But what I really, what really impressed me was the smoothness and the quietness of the bike. Uh, I've heard how the, the Tiger 900 is really quiet at highway speeds. You know, a lot of people have mentioned that in reviews, uh, especially we have the windshield in the highest position, and the rumors were definitely true. There was very little wind noise in the bike, and combined with the smoothness of the engine, uh, the bike was you know quiet at highway speeds, and you know you can hear in this comparison sound that I'll put up the noise difference between the Tiger Sport 660 at like 40, 50 miles an hour and the Tiger 900 GT at, you know, 50, 60, I think I even did 70 miles an hour. And you could hear just the wind noise from my helmet. I was wearing a full face helmet with a mic inside and you could actually hear the difference. On top of the, the smoothness and quietness of the ride, um, I love that it has this beautiful seven inch TFT display and lots of, of text such as it's got the four rider modes, you've got rain, road, sport, and off-road, as well as uh, you've got heated grips and adjustable front and rear suspension, you've got ABS, you've got traction control. It also has the option to add a quick shifter and both heated front and passenger seats, which those options actually come standard if you go for the GT Pro, but if you go for the regular GT, GT um, it doesn't come with it, but there are the options to, to add it on. One of the things that I was concerned about with the 900 GT was after viewing a lot of videos and reading online, a lot of people complained about a heat issue that comes from the 900. Uh, many say that there there's a lot of heat that comes out the left side where the fan for the radiator blows directly onto your left knee, especially on hot days and you know if you're moving slow in traffic. Now the radiator is actually split in two, so I'm guessing the left side of the radiator is part that comes, you know, the coolant's coming right from the engine, that hotter coolant's going into that one, and then it's cooling and going into the right side radiator and then back into the engine. So I'm guessing why that one, everyone is complaining, is is hotter. Now, I didn't notice any excessive heat. I even stopped at one point, took my glove off, put my hand down there, and it was warm, but it, it definitely wasn't hot. And it was like 80 something degrees that day, I think like mid 80s. Uh, and I was riding in, in slow traffic side streets and I didn't notice any excessive heat. In fact, if I didn't read and see reviews about people complaining of that, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. I would have just thought, you know, it's a bike. There's heat that comes off it like any bike. Definitely 
not nearly not as much as my air cooled you know super glide which you know when you're in slow traffic and, and you're snapped at a light you feel that heat just radiating off that you know big v twin engine maybe if you live in you know arizona nevada or you know if you're in a desert somewhere it's uh it's a lot more excessive but in 80 something degrees here on long island it was fine i didn't feel any excessive heat so that was probably the only negative thing, if you could even call it that, or one thing that I noticed about the bike. And like I said, it wasn't even really a big deal. But as far as uh, other things I liked about the bike, the self-canceling turn signals, I love the self-canceling uh, turn signals. I'm notorious for always leaving them on, so I was happy that this has them. Uh, this bike also has cruise control. I'm pretty sure cruise control is standard on all the 900s, whether you get the, the GT or the GT Pro, or you know you go up to the rallies. I'm, I'm almost positive cruise control is standard on all of them. Um, they do have the, the button for the heated seats on the bar, but of course the heated seats aren't there on the GT models, uh, unless you go pro and above. Also, it has the light for the um, fog lights which nice to know that the switch is there. And of course it's an add on unless you get the GT Pro, uh, then it comes standard with it. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't know if the lights come standard on the GT Pro. I think you actually have to go up to the rally, but either way it is, um, the option is there on either of them. So after test running all three bikes, I took a couple, couple of days to think it over and decide you know, what was more important for me and how much I wanted to spend. The Tiger 900 GT Low was the highest of the bunch coming in at you know, 14,900. Then you had the Speed Twin at 12,005. And then you had the Tiger Sport 660 at like 9,500. Or I could even go for like a used, uh, I found actually a used T120 Black Bonneville, which is very similar to the Speed Twin, except it has the high torque engine instead of the high horsepower engine. And those were going for around like $9,000 for like a 2018 with like 8,000 miles. That was pretty much the going rate. But after kind of writing down all the pros and cons of everything, I quickly dismissed the Tiger Sport 660 as it was too similar to my old Trident and it didn't make sense to buy that. So now it was really between the, the Tiger 900 GT and the Speed Twin or the used Bonneville. So which one did I decide? And as you probably figured, it's the Tiger 900. I just found it to be the most comfortable, the most stylish. Uh, it had everything that I wanted for a reasonable price. Yes, it was more expensive, but for everything that I was getting, um, I, I really like the bike. You know, let's not get into the, the inflation fees that these dealers charge these days. That's all, I could make a whole nother video on that. But I did get the deal and knock off a couple hundred bucks off the price. And after you know, picking it up and driving home, which was about an hour ride, you kind of the price kind of you forget about it you're just enjoying the bike and you're like yes this this is awesome i, I love riding the bike um i fell more in love with the bike in that hour driving home even though there was some traffic in here you know here and there but uh on the highway cruise control was that was amazing six whoa look at that oh my god cruise control is so nice first bike I've ever had to have cruise control you know besides the the manual those levers that you buy that then clamp on and they always end up slipping and they rest on the brake lever but this was actual real cruise control and that alone was just put a big smile on my face I love having the cruise control and it, it worked great and it was really nice to test the noise at highway speeds you know driving home for an hour it was quietest bike I've ever owned but you know by far and you know, I don't know if they can come through in these videos but you'll hear just the the road noise the wind noise the the engine noise everything just sounds smooth and even though that's not a big you know windshield uh, windscreen whatever you want to call them it somehow does an amazing job of deflecting the wind no buffeting on the helmet no noise I was able to actually turn my head with riding which I didn't even realize because a lot of times you know you turn your neck to look to the left or the right and you're just so used to at least on my bike especially with a full fight face helmet when you turn your neck you feel that wind like whipping your neck around like you got to fight to get your neck back to to center uh this w was not like that i was able to just turn my head left and right like nothing didn't feel any drag on my helmet or you know my neck feel like it was getting twisted off it was uh, really amazing Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, hopefully this information helps you about either of these bikes if you're looking into any of them. And of course, stay tuned. You know, Hit like, hit subscribe as I make more videos on this bike as I go through the maintenance. Uh, one of the downsides of owning a Triumph is even if you do the own maintenance yourself, you have to bring it to Triumph for them to reset the service light when that service light comes on at your first 600 mile oil change. And then again at every, I think, 10,000 miles after that or other 
things that require service. You can't reset that service light on your own, but yes, you can. I will put a link up top because I did it on my Trident and it also works on the Triumph 660, which the link will be up top and also below. You just need the Tune ECU app and you need a Bluetooth uh, OBD2 sensor. So thanks again, guys, for sticking around. Thanks for watching the video. Hope everyone has an amazing day and we'll see you next time.